one thing we've seen in previous cases is talking about the fact that in saturation, and remember saturation is when, for so, in a subthreshold case, I'm more than 4 UT, uh, larger on between the drain voltage and the source voltage, that I see a point that the current is roughly a function of, of gate voltage and source voltage. We also see this for a both threshold. It's not substantially different. And so what we see effectively is that we see a device that's relatively independent of a relatively independent of voltage that we're getting the same, roughly the same current. Now when you actually looked at a curve like this, we actually did see that there's some variability, and we'll get back to that in a moment. But assume that all you had to really look at was this red curve. Pretty much it would look like it's flat, and it doesn't really change over this entire almost 5 volt range. The key to realizing this is that this is effectively a current source. And in the way we're going to talk about integrated circuits, particularly on-chip type circuits, um, we have transistors everywhere. And so this actually becomes a natural element to work with, is to actually work with current sources. Now, you can get resistors, but they get expensive. And so for those who have been trained doing discrete time, sort of discrete board design, which would have been very popular, say, in the 70s, um, it's very hard to actually translate some of those. It's hard to, to just one-to-one -one equate the circuit design styles. They're very similar. But it's important to understand that most things done on chip are done in, in current source structure. And so really the whole concept is this really becomes a current source. And so we want to think about circuits where we have current sources, but maybe not quite ideal current sources. And remember that we know that our current source is only so good, you know, if you take the same data and just sort of stretch it over the, that region to look at the curve fits, that we would be able, then be able to extract out maybe far down what, it, what a intercept point is if, you're, if you want to do a classic approach. Um, but we actually can get an early voltage out of the structure. That early voltage um, really is not a physical term, right? It doesn't amount to any voltages created in the circuit anywhere. It's simply an extrapolation point. But what makes more sense is often to just think about this in terms of some, a function over UT and sigma. And this actually, again, has its roots in thinking more in terms of drain-induced barrier lowering. These two effects are really the same effect, so don't be surprised and don't be confused by it, but one is just a different manifestation of it than the other. And as a result, we'll typically work with this particular formulation throughout. Part of it is because it is UT, part of it is because sigma is relatively temperature insensitive. And this is kind of useful to have parameters that actually kind of give you a rough feeling of the overall dynamics in these cases. So when you start there, you go, well, okay, if this is structure that actually tells me, okay, maybe I actually have transistors that act like current sources or at least sort of. And when I talk about current sources, you'll hear concepts like for NFETs, where if the current is getting going towards ground, you'll see it as a current sink. And if it's going towards VDD, you'll see it as a current source. 